Well, this is a day of many uh, uh, earmarks. Uh, it's a day of remembering things. And um, my compatriots, who should be here to hear me say this, uh, we're celebrating 50 years uh, since high school graduation. And there are quite a few of us Episcopalians in the class of 66, just to let you know, even though we were a very bad class. <laughs> So, uh, 50 years, a long time, um, and uh, a time of reflection, half a century. And um, it, it is hard to believe. I know when Sally and Leanne and, and Dave Johnson were celebrating their 50th reunion, and we did the dinner out there with some 90 people building the courtyard and through the, the parish hall, I, I was prone to make fun of, oh, 50 years, what are you old people thinking? But, uh, but the class of 66 looks pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, a, a, a time to reflect, uh, a time to remember some of the stories, time to look back. And of course today is September 11th. It's been 15 years since that disastrous moment in our national history. And we still are working through the changes and feeling the pain. But we can also think every student in our school really has no memory of 9-11. Our times move on. And so we have a whole generation now behind us without that memory. And then, moving to scripture, this passage from Jeremiah. Now, you know the word, I hope, the Jeremiah. Well, we got a good dose of it today. And of course, this marks every four years. I think most of us are aware of what's happening every four years. That thing called the election. And so it sounds like uh, many of our candidates are taking a cue from Jeremiah. And things are not looking good. That wind that's coming down, it's not going to clean things up. It's going to burn. So it's kind of grim in Jeremiah's time. And of course, grimness was part of Israel and Judah in the day. And they had much <laughs> sorrow to look forward to. Of course, there's always that bit of hope at the end. I'm not going to make an end of everything, says God, and indeed, God persists, keeps going through time, through time, keeps working with the patience only God can maintain. So uh, we won't get that one again for another 12 years, but it'll be election year again. So, uh, I mean, we do, but three-year uh, lectionary, but uh, the, the Jeremiah well, probably in four years we'll be hearing the same stuff again. But anyway, we'll be ready. So, now to our gospel reading. The strange economies of God. So, what's this lesson about? Last week it was give up all your possessions. Remember? Give it all away. And now this week, we lose one little coin, and we got to spend all day sweeping around to get that one little coin, because it's so precious to us. What is Jesus thinking with these parables? Of course, it is a parable, and it connects to the listeners when the parables are, are geared to catch the attention of those who maybe don't want to listen. And so, of course, if the Pharisees and scribes are there, and we're talking about well, the sinners and the lost. Well, okay, yeah, those people, Jesus is probably talking about those people he's hanging with that we don't like so well. And then he draws them in and says, but these lost are to be found, must be found, will be found. So surprising conclusions. Reader, the listeners connect. And suddenly they're faced with, oh, I haven't thought of it that way, looking at it with a different lens. 
More deeply, the symbolism of this is perhaps talking about completeness. The ten coins represent the total. Why is it a hundred sheep and ten coins, ten fingers? I don't know that the Hebrews use the decimal system, but still, ten's a great number, a complete number. So if you're missing one, you're missing something. It's not all there. So symbolically, the idea is that God is reaching out to complete in his perfection, complete what God has created and started, and to complete in us, in this world, in all of creation. That's our vision for the end of things. God will complete things as God intended at the very first moment of creation. And so this is God's perfection. God gives up on nobody. Everybody has got to be complete. Heaven is not going to be complete until all God's children are brought safely home. As Bernadotia says, we're all going to heaven. Some of us won't like it when we get there, but that's another thing. So, Rob Bell, great evangelical preacher from Michigan, wrote the book, uh, uh, Love Wins. And he talks about God doesn't ever give up. And so, even death, even that time after our lives are complete, God is still going to work on our souls to bring them to completion. And so, that's one of the ways to look at our eternal hope. That we may have built up a lot of things that we're not so happy about, but God's going to keep working on us forever. And really, our eternal life begins, and this is Rob Bell's point of view as well, our eternal life begins every moment. We are building the internal completeness that God intends every time we do God's will, every time we work towards making the kingdom be what it's supposed to be. So, time and patience and working toward perfection. As a teacher, one of the most difficult conference moments was the parent who comes in and says, ah, oh, I've just given up on this kid. I'm not having anything more to do. And so as a teacher, you're kind of going, well, what do you expect me to do? You're not going to help. Even as a teacher, there were those kids where, you know, after, well, sometimes after two days, but usually a half a year, you know, I, I would give up on it. And I just go, well, you know, they're, they're doomed, they're off to wherever. After 30 years of experience in the system, and having kids who graduated that long ago, and seeing some of these success stories of kids that I had given up on, quite upside the head, don't give up. Perfection is always ready to be taken and worked on and moved forward. So. I mean, we look at Paul today. What would the church, when it took over, have done with a guy like Paul? Well, we have the stake. Good Anglican burning would do Paul. Or whatever. This man was a killer, a blasphemer, on and on. And yet, he's Saint Paul, the Saint of Paul, who explains our faith to us who, with the turnaround in God's good time, saw the light. And how about us, the lost and found of God's creation? Where do we belong? Now, Jesus is telling these stories for a purpose. And remember that little line, you know, God rejoices over one sinner who's saved, and all of those nice sinners who, those nice people who didn't need to be saved. Yes. Pharisees and scribes, by the way. No. Is that where, are we working our way over there? We're okay? No, no, we're lost. We're part of the lost. That's where we haven't achieved our perfection. So, let's take a look symbolically again at these coins as marks of time. 
God's going to give all of us ten coins. Okay? And we going to use them to our lives. And so, after a 50 years of adulthood, well, maybe we've only used up five of our coins. We've got them stored away. We've got another five left to go find. Well, maybe it's not that much. Maybe you don't want to find five more, but we have more starting this very moment to reach out for. Our lives are not complete. God's perfection has not been achieved in us or this world. And note the ending of the stories today. Joyful celebration. We found the sheep. Wonderful. We found the coin. And of course, this is God's economy one more time. This one coin that you lost and you found, you throw a big party and you spend five coins to have the party. <laughs> God's economy. Remember, God is limitless. There is no end to what God can accomplish. So, there's always more coins. As many as we need. If we'll follow God's will, use the times that we have to move forward. So, here we are. 50 years stored away. Our coins are safe. But we got more to spend. So what are we going to do with them? And some of you got lots more coins, got lots more to spend. What are you going to do with them? I mean, for us, we talk at the reunion about, well, grandkids, you know, I just retired, so all that good work I was doing and left behind is going to be filled with taking care of the grandkids. Huh? Busy job. Fun job. Okay? That's a coin to spend gladly with rejoicing. The ills of the world that Jeremiah talks about and that we're hearing this season. The ills of the world. Plenty to do there. So We've all got work to do. Just being a presence for our friends and neighbors. Sitting with somebody when they need a companion. Always something we can do. So, to finish, one comment on the how, and this comes from the uh, Sermon of the Week here by Arlette uh, ben Benoit. How do you use these coins? And we're switching back to the sheep. And so, how do you find the sheep and bring them back and, and uh, make them whole again? And so, the story that Arlette talks about is the, well, the Scottish sheep. And, you know, we saw the, the dogs hurting them, and sheep like to stay together. But apparently Scottish sheep are not so together-oriented. And so if they're up there on the little hill, and they look down, it's one, and there's this little area filled with beautiful grass. Well, down they, the one sheep goes and happily fills its stomach with good grass. While well, the rest, we don't know what they're doing. Well, then, the sheep looks back and it's a lot harder to go back up than it was to get down. In fact, it's impossible for this poor little lamby to get back up on top. Well, fortunately, there's still some more grass, but there's probably a, a little noise being made and the shepherd's out there and hears it. And the point is, the shepherd should not run right away and go try to get that sheep back up the hill. Let the sheep eat all the grass, spend a day or two or longer getting faint and getting tired. And then the shepherd can go take his tired sheep and boost it on up. I don't know if you've ever tried to take a sheep's head out from the fence when its horns are there, and maybe you can get up close to it, but the minute you touch it, why, well, I tell you, it's, they're going to rip that horn off or rip you fine. So, whatever coins you still have to spend. Whatever sheep you still have to find, do it in good time, in God's good time. 50 years, we've got those coins counted up, some of us a few more. We've got more to spend. So spend it with rejoicing. Amen.